There we go. Hello, folks. Totally should have had that set up beforehand, but how are we? How are we all, folks? What is the crack this evening? You're all very welcome to this uh, live stream. Um, I maybe I may look like I'm looking down as opposed to like looking right across. Um, my uh, yeah, my screen is my tablet at the moment, um, so it's kind of down as opposed to up and going. Hey, look, hi. Uh, so just in case you're wondering, why is he looking down? Uh, that's 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 the crack. Um, you're all very welcome to this. Uh, I mean, it's August, August. Um, I don't know, actually, I might just reframe that a little bit. There we go. Um, and I might, there we go. Is that a little less severe? Kind of. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, welcome to this August. By the way, can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, you're all very welcome. Um, this is the August one. It's as much the June one, the July one, uh, the August one, because here we are now in September. And uh, I just thought I'd come on and do a live stream. I mean, I hope to, uh, you know, I, I do aim to get back to um, doing these monthly. Um, at the moment, life has just been insane. Um, where I am right now, as, as you can see, I mean, again, I could have tidied this place up a little bit more, but this is this is the chaos we're living in right now. Um, this is my office. You know, you can see my, my, my TARDIS in the background, which is slowly but surely taking shape. You can also see hanging clothes because we're living in here at the moment. Um, so uh, that's fun because we are still, still in the process of renovating our house um that's been a process since the start of the year um, so <laughs> we've been living in a single room since like march um and uh don't get me wrong don't get me wrong we are very lucky to have a roof over our heads and to have the amenities that we do have uh, and that we do have the ultimate goal of having a house um as there are many many people who are not as fortunate as that um but uh yeah so that's where we're kind of at at the moment so it's been a lot more difficult just coordinating live streams with just with work with life with m me and my wife living in here um so that is a little uh, explanation slash excuse as to uh, where the live streams or lack thereof has been um let's see um also, uh, just to give you an update. I'm very, very excited. Not, 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 too, not, not too excited over the, yet, but we're, we're, we're getting there. So on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy, we're one patron away, one patron away from um, getting to my first major goal, and that is 50 patrons. And if I can achieve 50 patrons and maintain 50 patrons at least, I will make. Uh, I will start making um, bonus content that is audio commentaries for um, audio commentaries for my Manny Man Does History series. And um, so that's quite. Uh, you, uh, uh, Devin McGinnis is asking, how can I support? You can go to patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. I'll chuck it in here. Patreon. Dot com forward slash John D. Ruddy. Uh, boom. There we go. Uh, uh, that, that may or may not uh, work. Um, but yeah, um, because yeah, once once I get to 50, uh, 50 patrons, I will start making patron exclusive um, audio commentaries. There is one audio commentary that is um, that is in existence, and as a little treat uh, slash um, uh, what's the word slash uh, kind of carrot and stick. Uh, I might just send you the link here. Uh, do you know what? I'll, I'll I'll send you the link at the end because oh, I'm, I'm just I'm just hanging about here for the moment. Um, but I can send you the link to the one that I have up at the moment 
and dashboard content. Do, 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 do. John, you should have had this set up beforehand. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. There we go. Um, but yeah, so it's me um, going through each of my Manny Mandos history videos. So the first one that I did uh, being um, the history of Ireland. And so it's me and I am, okay, that's, oh, there we go. Um, it's me and I'm like pausing and like breaking down some of the illustrations, talking about some of the history behind it, talking about the, the, the thought and effort going into making them and all sorts of kind of things like that. And there we go, audio commentary. So I will... I'll keep that open and I can send on the link. Google. Oh, Google. Hello, Google. Um, I'll send on the link at the end of this live stream. So you can go and check out what is in store for uh, patrons of uh, of those. Um, because then I'll be, and I'll do them in order of release. So I'll have uh, World War One, World War Two, French Revolution. Uh, no, it's not. World War One, World War Two, Cold War. And go on, I think, French Revolution after that. We'll go on from there. Um, but uh, but not. It'll be nice to revisit them and kind of break them down and kind of point out. There's a lot of jokes over the years that a lot of people have spotted. There are still a couple of jokes which I have yet to see people uh, get. There's a Shaun of the Dead reference in my World War One video uh, that I don't think anybody has caught yet, uh, and that one's been up since 2014. So, uh, yeah, there's also, I mean, l loads of people like catch the Hot Fuzz reference in the uh, World War II video with the um, fascist hag, uh, you know, the, are, are you my mommy? One from uh, Doctor Who, Helen <laughs> Tardis. Um, but, yeah, n nobody has caught the Shaun of the Dead reference yet in my World War One video. So you are more than welcome to go and uh, see if you can spot it afterwards. Um but yeah, speaking of revisiting uh, my, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to address a lot of the kind of things going on in the chat shortly, but I'm just kind of going through some of these, giving you the update um, before I forget them. Um, yeah, I have been in the process of revisiting, as some of you may have noticed, my new video that was out there is not a new video. It was a, a remastered one of the American Revolution. So... Um, Manny Mandel's history has uh, will be included in a streaming service. Uh, I cannot talk too much about what it is, but let's just say it will be a streaming service. Uh, I'll give you more details when I have them. Um, but as part of that, I have been remastering all of the videos, putting them into widescreen, uh, re-recording a lot of the audio because the audio in the earlier one is... well. First of all, full disclosure, I recorded the first most of the videos on my iPhone, the voiceover, uh, just on the voice recorder. And at the time, it sounded fine. But as the years have gone on, you really hear it. Uh, and also, I was speaking super quickly. You know, the politics of World War Two or, or politics of politics in 19th century Europe were massive. What's changed? It was all made, you know, just... Because when I first started making these videos, YouTube was a very different place. It was all about short videos. It was all about bang, 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 bang. It was all about quick, concise. Um, whereas in the last four or five years, YouTube has become a more long form um, platform. And so, and I have I have kind of changed my formats to kind of follow suit as, as where, where I can. But at the same time, all those older ones are still really fast. And, you know, sometimes if a, if your English isn't amazing, that can be that can be a difficult challenge because my accent isn't necessarily an accent that everyone would be familiar with. So that's a stumbling block. And also um, there's there's no time to think, you know, it's just do, 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 do. And so. You know, it, it's kind of like you're being dragged along the back of a uh, drag dragged along from the back of a car, where it's just like, oh my god, slow down. Um, so uh, there are little moments. You probably noticed in my more recent videos that I do take a bit more time to to speak, to think, to let you think, to let you. 
process what I've just been talking about. So that's just the whole point. That's the whole reason, whole raison d'être. Um, but yes, yeah, that's been the thing. Um, I've, so I've been very busy with that because that's been a whole full-time thing, getting those sorted. There are new history videos coming up as well. There will probably be one or two other remasters released before before uh, my next new history video. Um, I have a couple of ones in the pipeline. I've got one on Watergate coming up. I've got, of course, uh, Monarchs of England Part 3. Um, one about Saint Columba, who is a local saint here in Donegal, but he's one of the patron saints, saints of Ireland. And it's his 1500th anniversary of his birth this year. So as a Donegal man, uh, as, a, as, a, as a man who went to the school Skull Colin Kill and whose uh, roots are in Garton, which is the birthplace of Colin Kill, uh, I figure it is my duty to uh, to make a, a, a video. Plus, it'll be nice to do a video based in 6th um, century? Yeah, 6th century Ireland. Um, so that'll be really cool. Um, so loads, loads of stuff, loads of stuff. Anyway, now I, I'm just going to pop back, have we nosy through these comments. Um... see big question what's your thought on the fall of kabul and now that the taliban are in control quite a, a few of you are asking about afghanistan um i i have been wanting to do a, a john talks on this i no time oh my god um but uh yeah it's it's a mess it's frustrating it's um there's a lot to unpack, but the long and the short of it is, is the frustration of United States forces spent 20 years, nearly 20 years in there. And what, what is there to show for it? You know, I mean, you know, one could argue, oh, well, they, the, the, they killed Osama bin Laden who wasn't even in Afghanistan. You know, he, he left Afghanistan probably a couple of weeks or weeks after 9-11. Um, but, uh, you know, so there was that. Um, it's, it's just so frustrating, just history repeating itself. You know, I mean, the Soviets did this. The Soviets were in there for 10 years. And they were, and, you know, the Soviets were the ones that really kind of... Uh, started that cycle of um i mean obviously they weren't the first ones to invade uh afghanistan has that reputation of being the graveyard of empires because so many empires throughout history have tried to conquer it britain in the 1840s um and like if you even go all the way back at it like to alexander the great i'm pretty sure kind of um but uh yeah um, it's just that thing of why, mm, why? I mean, we know why with regards the frustration and vengeance and uh, everything that kind of went back into after 9-11. And there's a film I, don't, I, I didn't like when I first saw it and... It's only kind of as the years have gone by have I kind of really considered much more of its relevance. It felt very on the nose. Um, but I still stand by it. The first 40 minutes of this film are amazing and the rest, is, it just really falls apart. But it's the 2005 or six, uh, the Steven Spielberg uh, War of the Worlds. Um, but just that moment where the sun is just like, you know, we get back at them. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go over there and we'll get back at them. It's like, Get, get get back at who the 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 poor people of Afghanistan who are trying to make a living, um you know yeah under 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 Taliban rule, but like I mean part of me is kind of sitting there going, wouldn't it be hilarious if it ends up that the kind of modern uh, modern Taliban ends up actually being an effective government <laughs> and people somehow it, it actually works I mean probably won't or it, it will be a very uh, 
uh, backward um, version of it. But like part of me is sitting there going, wouldn't it be hilariously ironic if like the most effective government that 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 comes out but it's not i mean you know the the progress that had been made by so many people or by so many women there as well had been so much but unfortunately it was built on all of that progress was built on a foundation of was built on a foundation of corruption you know where America handed control over to very corruptible businessy types and you know and who it's it's a very frustrating situation and of course you know uh, loads of people uh, were commenting on my United States video where you know I was chatting about um, Joe Biden at the end because obviously I, I, Joe Biden had just become or was just inaugurated president and uh, loads of people like, oh, you know, Joe Biden is, um, uh, what, you know, what do you have to say about him now? And I mean, I mean, it was Trump who started the ticking clock to get out of Afghanistan. I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate the desire to get, a, to get the, the desire and kind of backing, backing up on that to actually get out of Afghanistan because, what were they doing there other than military con contracts really you know um and that's that's just the the military industrial complex of you've got all of these all of these companies that make equipment that make weapons that make car parts that make you know all of these different things and they have to make money they can't you know the and the US military is their contractor and they have to make money so war has to happen you know and that and that was the thing that eisenhower warned about at the end of the 1950s i mean he was guilty of it too and and there are some who would suggest that his um his warning of it was as much of a hey this is look i'm because i'm saying it out loud then it means that we're conscious of it but at the same time it happened and it continues to happen so there's that um but it is that just that military industrial complex um i appreciate joe biden going right now let's let's get out of here but he did it in way too i mean the thing as well is like what what were they expecting either? I mean, it, it, it was a very quick withdrawal. It was a very quick. Uh, um, but he was trusting the Afghan forces that the United States had equipped with weapons uh, to, to do that. But like he's expecting that every single one of them wouldn't be in some ways either not scared of the Taliban or secretly supportive of you know it's a very complex situation and I and I'm not I'm not a I'm not a voice of of uh, what's the word you know I'm I am no expert on this situation these are very much just the kind of opinions off the top of my head of how, of how I feel about it um, and I mean I'm I'm just so sad for people of Afghanistan you know who once again are in a difficult position that has been created not by them but by some foreign power using them as a battlefield once again you know and uh, it's, it's just a very frustrating um situation um, and like I, it, that it was a who, whoever was whoever was gonna do it, like just that power vacuum. You know, you could say if they took their time in in getting people out, would would it have been as chaotic? Would it have been? But there's all sorts of arguments as to why it had to happen quickly. Why you know if if it had happened slowly, there would have been a lot more ability for. But but at the end of the day, like you know, they're sitting there going. 
well, if we had a, taken our time, then it would have given the Taliban more time to prepare. It's like, well, pulling out, they, they, they were clearly well prepared because they just walked back in and was just like, okay, we're in control now. You know, it's just ah, madness, madness. Um, so let me see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Devin McGuinness, hello, expat from Donegal, living in Canada. Hello. Hello to Canada. Canada's a great country. Not without its faults. It, too, has a similar, albeit not as bad, but similar history of colonialism to the United States. Um, they have a very complex uh, relationship with the Aboriginal people, including the residential schools and all sorts of things like that so um but at least i think canada does a better job at addressing it and kind of going okay you know this this country is built on a on a on a foundation of blood this is built on but we're all here now so let's get on with it and that's the thing about colonialism like this whole thing of you know go home and it's like well we're here now but it's, you know, because because you've got that that same story ev everywhere of just this thing of, well, we're here now and this is our home and we've been living here for generations, um, you know. Um, but it's it's to whose detriment is that, and does that continue to be detrimental, or are you attempting reparations for the sins of the past? Um, you know, that's, that's just something I think Canada does a lot better in comparison to say the United States where, you know, they, they are well aware of it. And, you know, whereas the United States continues to have Andrew Jackson on their $20 bill, you know, like it's that kind of thing that just really annoys me. I, I hate Andrew Jackson. Um, just trail, trail of Tears alone um, is just despicable. And still can't get over it. He's still on the $20 bill. You know, it's just. And that was only a newer thing. Like, that was a 20th century edition from as far as I can remember. Um, you know, I think he only got put onto the 20 after his like centennial of of his presidency so would have been that would have been in the, the 1930s perhaps i'm i'm not 100% sure but i think i remember noticing that when I, when i was doing my um when i was doing my videos and kind of working out what no what the different dollar bills looked like at the different times um let's see Hey man, 16 year old, this is James Chick. Hey man, 16 year old Brit here. Hello from Oxford. Just want to ask, do you have any tips for A level history? I don't know what the equivalent is in Ireland, but 16 to 18 years, pretty much. Cheers. Um, hmm. I mean, I, I don't know what the, what the syllabus is for A level history. The equivalent in Ireland is the leaving cert, the leaving certificate. Um, but because in Ireland we do a lot more subjects, we do anywhere from kind of six to eight, some some crazy ones do nine, uh, but like somewhere between six and eight subjects for our final uh, high school exams. Whereas in the UK, it's something like only three subjects. So obviously you do a lot more of it. And um, I mean, tips, just get, get to know your history, get to know it, try, you know, it, it, I suppose it, in a lot of ways it depends on your teacher. Um, get a good, strong foundation. At least this is what I always say just to anybody in getting, getting, learning about history. Constantly find points of reference. Constantly, you know, in the in the pop culture that you watch. In the even even if the pop culture isn't a hundred percent historically accurate, it's always good once you have. Um, Kind of points of reference to think about it's amazing how how much you can start kind of really filling in that tapestry of history like you know the, the, a lot of people are like, oh a, a 1920s themed party and they're like oh okay great gatsby party oh yeah great gatsby yeah, yeah i get it i get it you know um or you know 1910s fashion and like ah, 
Titanic. Oh yeah, you know, like just that. Uh, people have they do a lot of people don't realize that they have a better knowledge of um kind of history and historical periods as as they do it's just those kind of points of reference and making those links um but oxford i love oxford i was in oxford in when 2019 yeah i think it was in 2019 i'm a massive tolkien fan that's another project that i'm working on i'm working on a tolkien video uh, for my manny man does lore i'm super excited about that i think actually that that's going to be one of the next new ones coming out because i just want to do something that's history adjacent because um yeah i, I, I I, I want to do something where I don't have to worry as much about the historical accuracy of the illustrations. <laughs> um, although there will still be many Tolkien scholars going, well, actually, First Age Elven Swords di didn't look like that. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. I, I'm a Tolkien scholar. I wrote my college dissertation on uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, but yeah, so when I was in Oxford, I went to the Natural History Museum. Was it? Yeah, the Natural History Museum. Um, and the... Uh, what's the one in the back and behind it? Um, what's the word? The study of humanity. Um, anthropology. The Anthropological Museum, I think. It's basically... They, they like take pipes, like, like smoking pipes, from all over the world and put them all together. And then they take like um, broomsticks from all over the world and put them all. In the so they've got like a case of, of pipes, a case of jars, a case of pots, a case of shoes, you know, and, and just, it's really cool. I mean, again, colonialism and taking things from all over the world, but still, there's a lot of benefits of kind of looking at things scientifically and whatnot. <sighs> Um balancey balancey. What did the what did the British Empire ever do for us? Um but uh but yeah, so being a big Tolkien fan as well, I uh visited the Eagle and Child pub where he frequented. Um or I think it's what is the uh oh it has a nickname. Uh well it's the Eagle and Child, so something like the the bird and the babe, I think, or something like that, I think is the local uh, thing. And then walked up to Northmore Road, where he wrote The Hobbit and I think Lord of the Rings as well while he was there. And I traveled then on up to the graveyard where Tolkien was buried. And it was very special. It was, it was kind of like my mecca, you know, because I'm just such a, um, such a kind of deep, spiritual personal link to lord of the rings and to um uh to the works of J.R.R. tolkien i i was the perfect age for when those films came out 20 years ago now this year 20 years since the first film came out and i was 12 when that first film came out 13 when the second film 14 when the, when the third film came out oh perfect age to watch those films um it was bizarre actually just where, where it kind of got to a point in my life where those films were in my life for long for more than half of my life um once i kind of hit that threshold when when when, when would that have been um well, ten, oh, i suppose it kind of not long after i hit well, yeah i kind of my mid my mid 20s would have hit that but uh, but just kind of realizing that these films were have been in my life and I watch them every year and um, I watch the extended edition in a all day marathon every year and I've done that since you've been able to do the extended marathon from 2004 when the when the extended edition Return of the King was released so I've done that every year since um also, if you want to hear me talk about Tolkien a little bit more as well, on my other channel, uh, John D. Ruddy Does Stuff, I have a whole thing about The Hobbit and uh, how I recut The Hobbit. So uh, you can pop over and see that later as well if you want. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, oh my goodness. Devin McGinnis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, back... Um, um, kind of out of date on my... Uh, but what's what's the word? I'm, 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 
further back on <gasps> Devin McGinnis. Thank you so much. That brings us. Does does that bring us up? As long as nobody's jumped ship since <laughs> it's possible. Oh no! Oh no! Someone clearly has jumped ship. I don't know. But Devin, that is hugely appreciated. Um. Uh, the list that I was looking the last day, it was on 49, but now it's on 47. Oh, well. Well, folks, such is the... Uh, ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. No, no, the, the, there, there, there are a couple of deleted pledges. That's fair. It's fair. It's fair. It's totally fair. Um, it is your money. Um, and... Um, but... Uh, such is the seesaw world of Patreon as well, folks. Um, and that... That can be quite difficult. Patreon has been quite difficult. Um, and um, I suppose sometimes it, I, get, I, get, I get a bit frustrated because um, sometimes like I, uh, you can't help but compare yourself to, to other folks, to other kind of creatives, to other, to, to, to my creative peers. And there's a lot of folks who have much more successful uh, Patreon um, campaigns than I do. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm but I'm nearly there with my with 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 my goals as well. So um, another three patrons. Um, so sign up now. And I'll start doing the doing the audio commentaries. Um, but uh, but yeah, like because that is that's also the thing um, with these videos as well. And the the reason why sometimes you might get a bit frustrated. Why why am I kind of coming out with? you know, videos consistently often. And part of that is just that um, I, I'm still not able to rely full time on, say, ad revenue and Patreon income. Um, other YouTube creatives are, or they have loads of uh, different um, uh, income strands, uh, and which I do too. Um, JohnDRuddy.com. There's a whole pile of merchandise in the shop, and I have uh, Irish history coloring books as well. Loads of fun Irish history coloring books. They're really cool. And if you buy two of them, then you can cut out all of the pages and stick them up on the walls. And they're pretty funky. I really like these. Um, and uh, it's the Easter Rising. Uh, these are available at johndruddy.com uh, in the store. So you can go and order yours now. Um, say shameless self-promotion. But yeah, um, so like that, that's the thing, you know, with, with uh, Patreon isn't a guaranteed thing. And, and just because you see someone's on Patreon, you're like, oh, cool. They're, they, they must be raking it in. And um, full disclosure, I'm not raking it in. <laughs> Uh, if I were raking it in on Patreon, I would be a lot more comfortable and confident to sit here full time making these videos, making these videos, making these videos. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I have to keep several plates spinning at once. So whew, thank you for your ever longing patience. Um, so uh Anytime you come to Canada, you can stay with us. Many Irish in West Canada. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I, I I have family in Canada, uh, both in um, I have many cousins uh, and friends across Canada. But I have I have family uh, in Canada. In that, my wife is Canadian, and um, so uh, so yeah. So my, my 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 future children will be will be half Canadian. So that's exciting. Um, let's see. Where are we at now? Do, 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 do. I am so far behind in the um, in the comments. Um, okay. Yeah, do, do, do. I'd I'd, I'd love I'd love to do more of a video about the history of Canada actually. Um, uh, what do you think the U.S. should have done? Uh, better person, twenty twenty one. See, that's the thing. I mean, what do you think the U.S. should have done? Gotten out of there a lot sooner. I mean, there's a lot of shoulda, coulda, would. Is there like you know, there's the what could they have done this year? But like, 
what could they have done 10 years ago? What could they have done 15 years ago? You know, um, like that's, that's a big thing um, is, you know, you're sitting there 20 years later with little to show for it. And I think that's everybody's frustration. Um, both everybody who is pro-war and anti-war, uh, everyone's frustration. And it's once again just, you know, it's, it's like Vietnam all over again where, you know, what, what did it amount to other than a, a whole generation of, of veterans, at least in the, in the American end of things, a whole generation of veterans who were left high and dry by their own government and, um, and a country left in a really, t like Vietnam's uh, lumber industry, uh, as far as I know, was really, like they, they say, I suppose it's kind of a good thing maybe that they can't cut down trees because we need every tree that we can get, but they, they weren't, they haven't been able to cut down too many trees because the, the, the trees are riddled with bullets. And if you put any, uh, if you put uh, those trees into any of the, the big saws or anything and a bullet catches on the saw, poof, you know, so it's, um, but uh, yeah, uh, but what, what could they have done in Afghanistan? Have a better exit strategy? Have, have a, an exit strategy in the first place. They went in there without an exit strategy. No wonder they were in there for 20 years. Like, again, like... I said Lord of the Rings was in my was in my life or the Lord of the Rings movies were in my life for more than half of my life. That's the same span of time as the war in Afghanistan, you know? Like the Lord of the Rings movies have existed for the same amount of time or at least in, uh, having been released have existed for the same amount of time as the war in Afghanistan. Like that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know? So uh yeah. I'm, I'm very passionate about this, clearly. Um, what's your opinion on Cheez-Its and Baileys? As in the food, like che like cheese, like cheese. Baileys, I mean, I don't I don't drink alcohol, so. Uh, well, I've had non-alcoholic Baileys, and it's delicious. Um, John talks about Puerto Rico statehood or independence. Yes, Bonesaw. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to do, do one on that. I mean... Spoilers. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much Puerto Rico would be, um, would benefit from complete independence, and would would it be would it be more would it be able to kind of share share in the wealth a bit more being a state? Obviously, I mean as it stands at the moment. Puerto Rico gets sold high and dry, uh, left high and dry, and the worst for malafors, where you mix metaphors, and the worst for doing that. Um, so, uh, yeah, being left high and dry. Um, or, pardon the poor choice of words, because it's not left high and dry, left low and destroyed by hurricanes quite often. Um, so, uh, but I think... I think Puerto Rico, I think if they are to remain uh, in the United States, I think they need to be a state. I think it's ridiculous that they're not, you know, and for anyone that's like, oh, but they're an island. It's like, well, so is Hawaii, you know, so is Hawaii. What, like, why is Hawaii uh, a, a state and not Puerto Rico? I mean, the reason is, is because that uh Puerto Rico would probably be a Democrat stronghold, and the Republicans don't want that. You know, that whole thing just really annoys me. Of just that, that the Republicans' ability to maintain power and control is so frustrating. You know, and anytime they're called out for it, they're like, "No, this is just democracy." But um, and and the Democrats let them do it. The Democrats let them do it time and time again because they're like, oh, well, we need to think about bi bar bipartisanship. It's like the Republicans don't care about bipartisanship, or at least they haven't done in the last 20 years, you know? And when they're in power, they're not going to wait for you, you know? So get on with things. Um, oh, 
here's a question. Abdullah Afsal, how do you motivate yourself? <laughs> I think I had a really uh, sensitive spot. <laughs> um, it's been a, it's been a very the, the pandemic has been very tough. Um, it's been very tough. It's been very long. It's been very uncertain, and motivation has been difficult at times. Particularly, I mean, I've been so frustrated with the YouTube algorithm. I've been so frustrated with it. Um, it's so unpredictable and it's so unreliable. Um, I spent five months working on the, at least, you know, at least five months working on, or what turned out to be five months because of just all moving house and, and the living conditions and stuff. But it ended up being five months, uh, more or less working on the civil rights part two video. And, um, and yes, you know, and I'm not taking for granted the the views that it does have. It's sitting on about fourteen thousand views, and that's great, you know. And I am grateful for every single one of those views. But given the amount of work and time and effort that I put into it, I feel like it could have done could have done more. I'm also really proud of that video. I'm really proud of the work of the the story that it tells. Um. I am also very aware uh, that I'm a white guy from Ireland telling that story. So um, I can also understand that if there are people who do take umbrage with that, and that's that's fair. Um, I mean, I've told the stories of many different histories, um, some related to my own history, some not. Um, but that being said, I mean, the civil rights uh, movement in America did actually directly affect uh, my history in Northern Ireland, the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland being inspired by that. So, you know, there are, there are all sorts of kind of parallels and whatnot, but, um, but yeah, the algorithm has been very frustrating. I'm not going to lie. And uh, sometimes motivating yourself to put that amount of work into a project without the guarantee, excuse me, without the guarantee of of that the getting the 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 desired viewership back i mean the president's oh my god there we go hiccups uh president's video at the start of the year is i think it's closing in on half a million views which is great you know which is um uh and you know and it was very relevant it was launched the day after joe biden's inauguration it's almost an hour long um, it's, all, it's quite controversial <laughs> um, in uh, some of my facts and some of my opinions. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it, like that's been doing really well. And then the Civil Rights Part 2 video is by comparison and by the amount of work that I put into it, it's not doing as well. And I also and, and I also did a John talks about a United Ireland, which took like a day to put. I mean, yeah, like it was it was easy to write that off the top of my head because it's a it's a spiel that I've had going in my head for quite a while anyway, and it's a conversation that I've had with a lot of people, so that was easy to write. That was easy to put together, but like that was a day's work, <laughs> and it sh it shot up to about forty thousand views. And the civil rights video is sitting at about like 15, 14, 15,000 views. And I'm just like, ah. <laughs> this is the face of someone slightly losing the plot. <laughs> slightly losing the plot while uh, making these videos. <laughs> uh, so how do I stay motivated like this? <laughs> Laughing because otherwise I would cry. Um but in all seriousness, though, like if if you if if you if you are in the position to support, every bit of support is hugely appreciated. Patreon.com forward slash John D. Ruddy. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, um, I mean, you are here now, and uh, and that's that's also really um, really appreciated. Uh, let's see. Um, 
any chance you'd do something on Scottish history front? This is from Lachlan McKinney. Uh, McKechnie. McKechnie, is that right? Uh, it would mean so much. I uh, love your videos so much. It would be so cool uh, for someone like me with an Irish mom and Scottish, not British dad. And <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, that would be, uh, that's, that's definitely one on the, on, on the list. Um, history of Scotland. I mean, my dad's from Scotland as well. Uh, of Irish parents, so but um, another another one that I've been planning on doing. I'll, I'll deliver this bit in uh, in my one of my Scottish accents for 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 fun. Um, but one of my other projects which I've been planning on doing. I think I spoke about this before. Still, it's it's about getting the time to do it. Um, but it's uh, it's going to be a tutorial series about doing accents and i'm still trying to work out if i want to do it in this channel or if i want to do it in another channel uh, or something like that to just try and work out which is the best format for it i mean naturally i probably should do it here because it's uh because i have the subscribers here but as the algorithm has shown as well, that's not always a guarantee. Um, but yeah, uh, that's something that I definitely want to do. But as far as history goes, as well, um, as far as history goes, yeah, I definitely love to do something. I mean, I obviously, I've kind of touched on Scottish history where it overlaps with, say, my Monarchs of England video, it's going to overlap a lot more as the videos go on. Um, but also, as well, those little those little links with Irish history. I'm just checking on my dog. He's uh, chilling out there. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, Sarah, first time watching one of your streams. You are very welcome, Sarah. Um, let's see. Oh, James Chick. Oh, they're doing War of the Roses and Sarast and Communist Russia, basically 1860s to 1960s. Oh, that's cool. Um, I mean, I, I, have, I have a video about the Russian Revolution, so you can check out how the how the Tsars ended. Um, uh, oh, the War, War of the Roses, that's, that's a cool one. Um, that will be probably not in part three, but probably part four of the... Um, of the monarchs of England videos, I'm still working out. I mean, you uh, usually, I think the next video will be at least it'll have the start of the Hundred Years' War in it. Um, I like to have like a nice kind of subtitle underneath the underneath the name. So part one will be like Anglo-Saxons, part two the Normans, part three probably the Plantagenets. Um, but then at the same time. Even though the Plantagenets actually started in the Normans one, and then the following one will probably be War of the Roses, and then then it gets a bit more straightforward with naming them because then you've got the Tudors, you got the Stuarts, then you got the the Georgians or the the Hanovers, I suppose, uh, which would bring you all the way up to Victorians, and then the Windsors for for the final part, um, so. There's a lot of work uh, in that uh, to come ahead, and I really look forward to to doing to doing that as well. Um, let's see. Mm. Uh, the FBI recently discovered that the January sixth riots was not an organized insurrection by Orange Man. I mean, he didn't personally organize it, but like he certainly stoked the fires and. You know, it's um, like that's but that but that that's how anybody like that works with plausible deniability and you know getting that's the the what's the word um, the the right wing playbook of just um, or the alt right playbook of plausible deniability going well, we didn't tell them to do that we simply suggested that maybe this is something that needs to be done we didn't tell them to do it we didn't tell them to do it yeah and that like that's that's where we're at in the world right now is we didn't tell them to do it 
They did that themselves. So that's fun. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Lucas Hill Whithall is saying, I take A level history as well, and we do Tudors and Cold War. Cool. Uh, one of those is far more interesting than the other. I'll allow you to guess which. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on your preference. I'm sitting there going, oh, they're both really interesting times. Um, yeah. I don't know. It all depends on which way you look at it. I mean, because th they're both really intriguing in very different ways. Um, I mean, the Tudor times are really interesting for the political intrigue, for the age of exploration, for the just the the changing times of the oh, like Shakespeare at the same time as that and uh, the Reformation and so much going on there and then you got the Cold War which is amazing like well, I I don't know which one you you think is uh, is uh, more interesting because they're both really interesting um, molten monkey anthropology <laughs> thank you very much um oh i think you you support me on patreon uh from i think i think i think i think uh let me see do, 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 do. um i'm getting there I'm, I'm, I'm nearly getting caught up um yawar divaj uh i really enjoyed your work on world war one world war two civil war cold war thank you very much um, one with the totem pole in it, you mean, James Jack? One with the totem pole, yes, yeah, the anthropology museum. Wow, I'm miles back. Do you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna skip all the way down to the end and uh, work my way back up. August live stream in September. Have I missed something, Blue Bilbo? Uh, no, you haven't missed something. This is well, this is my intention on having another live stream before the end of September to get back into the swing of things. But I didn't want to call this one the September one because I do intend to do uh, a live stream uh, at some point uh, before the end of the month because uh, I want to get it back into it. And um, let me see. Uh, Grimbane, I'm French. I just wanted to say I really loved your video of Chateau Gaillard. Oh, thank you very much. That was a lot of fun to draw, actually. Sometimes it's really nice to to just sit down and take take your time to draw something like that and draw all the. That one took a while to do, but it was really satisfying to draw. Um, I'd I'd love to visit there actually, and just I mean, obviously, it's in no ways the the shape that it was. Ah, oh, the siege of Chateau Gaillard is so frustrating, um, because when Richard the Lionheart had it built. It was nigh on impregnable, or so so they reckoned. You know, it it was amazing. And when John inherited it, he decided to build a chapel in one of the places, and the chapel was very dark. So what did John do? John built a big window in the chapel and that window went through one of the main defensive walls and so when the besiegers were trying to get in they just climbed up the ladder into the window and got into the castle well done oh it's so frustrating i hate things like that really stupid things in history where you're just like oh why did you do it like that why um very frustrating um let's see uh what sort of what sort of dog do i have uh, this this is not this is not dumb um what sort of dog i have a german short haired pointer let's see if he's it might be super lazy. Hey, Koo. Do you want to come here? His name is Koo, which is Irish for hound. Do you want to come here? Come here. Come over. 
He's he's the laziest dude. He's just. Do you want to come over? Say hi. No. He's just looking at me like I've got ten heads. No. He's just too chill. Too chill. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's grand. <laughs> you know the old adage, let sleeping dogs lie. Oh, look at this. Oh, there he is now. Of course. Is that oh, 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 no, no, no longer. Oh, wacka 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 wacka. All right. Hello. All right, let's see. I hop up. Give me another one. This is cute. Hello. How are you? Look like a gremlin with your ears hanging like that. Hmm. You good, pup? He's still a pup, technically. Hmm. You alright? You sniffing about? Right. Where you go? Yay! You can go back up to your bed. You're gone. Yeah, you're gone. There you go. See that sleeping dog's lying there. It's like, oh, but I need attention now. See what you did? No, it's fine. He'd be like, oh, okay, he's ignoring me again. Yeah. And he's back on the bed. He's he's chill. Um uh, there we go. Uh Civil Rights Part Two was awesome. The algorithm should recommend it much more. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, I mean, you know, if 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 you want to, you are more than welcome to share the video. Share, sharing my videos really helps as well. You know, just um shows people as well that you're you kind of you're you care enough about the video to kind of go hey look i think everybody should watch this so you know share it on twitter share it on facebook share it wherever you share your media um we shares are always uh, are always um appreciated um let's see Ryan McGoldrick, American here. Can Brexit bring a united Ireland? Or is that a pipe dream? My family left after World War One, and I'd like to see peace there. Um, hmm. I mean, I did say in my United Ireland video, my views before Brexit, or before the Brexit vote, I was very much a status quo person. I was very much a... Uh, um, I was very much a... Uh, what's the word? Um, live and let live. That it was. It was the best of both worlds. You know, the people in Northern Ireland, anyone who considered themselves Irish, you know, felt Irish. Those who considered themselves British felt British. But um, Brexit just pulled away the curtain again and reminded everybody of the reality of it. Um, that Northern Ireland is still very much part of the United Kingdom, and if that calls into question things like the Belfast Agreement, the Good Friday Agreement, or things like that, then oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, will we see peace there? Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, could it bring a United Ireland? I think it could. Um, in it, it, it could be... I used to think that it would, it would have been quite quick and quite sudden but i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't be surprised if there's a vote within the next kind of 10 years or so i would imagine that um i would imagine that the pandemic just kind of threw everything up in the air a bit and just it you know it's like nobody's going to talk about a united ireland when we have much more pressing issues at, at hand which is totally fair which is good responsible um but yeah i don't know i don't know um i mean it's maybe controversial i'd almost prefer to see i i, I would prefer to see the uk rejoin the european union first i prefer to see that than a united ireland make of that what you will um because i th i think we're all we're all better together as one 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 big union and don't 
and don't try that oh well why don't you just join the union of the united kingdom again it's like because that, that wasn't a good relationship <laughs> oh well that's why britain left the eu it's like well ah politics they're not so simple are they <laughs> oh great crack um let's see uh, can you do something on modern western politics influencing rest of the world and iran revolution type um possibly um i think for my next couple of videos i might stay away from more modern politics as tends to annoy a lot of people <laughs> it rubs a lot of people up the wrong way i might i might i might kind of do some things that are uh just a bit a bit more neutral that everyone can get behind hopefully um, but uh, definitely want to do the Iran revolution. Um, a lot of the history of Iran is really fascinating, going all the way back. Um, but, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Josh says, the media has far too much control over popular opinion in the U.S. I totally agree with that. Yep, I do. On both sides, you know, on both sides. And... Um, and the problem with that is and i know this 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 is a it's it's made at least sound like a like a, a what's the word you know a well-worn record at this stage but um it's it's capitalism you know oh um but uh yeah it's uh it's grand it's it's fun it's fun just the the, the drive the drive for it uh, is uh, is there but folks uh that is that's an hour now and uh i think i will love you and leave you for now and um, that was a lot of fun uh, a lot of good conversations had um please consider uh, supporting me at patreon.com forward slash john d ruddy if we can get it up to uh, if we can get it up to 50, sorry, I'm multitasking here. Um, if we can get it up to 50 patrons, then I will begin producing all of those patron exclusive audio commentaries. And there is a preview of what the audio commentaries will be. That is the first one that was produced a year or two ago now. Um, but it's the audio commentary for my Irish history video, uh, my very, very first one. Um, so uh, there you go. Um, but for now, uh, thank you very much for joining. And hopefully I will see you again before the end of the month for my actual September Um uh, for my actual September one. Um, Devin McGuinness, thank you so much for your kind support. That is hugely appreciated. Um, and uh, I will chat to you soon. See you later.